Starbucks decaf coffee? FDA cancer fears? What is this? They're banning the extraction solvent is my guess. So um, let's take a look. Do you think there's DCM or another chlorinated solvent inside the uh, decaf coffee used for decaffeination? I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can decaffeinate coffee, but uh, let's go ahead and just look for the solvent. Maybe a couple of the flavors uh, in this Starbucks decaffeinated coffee. All right, we got a little bit of coffee in the headspace tube, and it's going to go ahead and heat it in the back trap. We're going to go ahead and do 500 microliter headspace injections onto my GCMS, and let's go see if we can find that solvent. All right, little sidebar. We're going to do a new series. So here we go. All right, we're starting a new series. It's called the Unsung Robotic Heroes of the Mass Spec Everything brand. I mean, this is, this is high quality robotics, like uh, made in Switzerland. Come on. These are the robots that make things work. Uh, the first one we're going to be talking about here is this Tri Plus Auto Sampler on my GCMS. This thing does some work. Right, so the cool thing about these uh, robotic systems, they can like our module, right? So they can take different heads and different syringes and different adapters. They can take different like modules for heating, uh, for mixing, for doing extraction. So if you're doing like PFOS analytics, uh, if you're doing any type of like, you know, Quetcher's extraction method, you could simplify it by using these robots. And you, you basically don't even have to hire people. And then look at this thing. It's switching its head all by itself. So that's going from a liquid injection head to headspace where it's going to inject air. I'm using it to go ahead and just boop, grab my auto sampler headspace file and then it puts it back in this heater. And then the cool thing about this heater is it's programmable, right? You can go ahead and tell it what temperature, uh, how long to do the little belly dance shakes for. And so I got it set up to do like, I don't know, like 10 belly dance shakes or something like that. Easy as that. Generate the headspace gas. And the most important thing is that you want to keep the temperature uh, on the heater like at 60 degrees. Uh, and then make the heated, so you can see the syringe, the headspace syringe, is actually heat jacketed. So you don't get condensation inside the syringe. So you got to run that one like 65 right? So because you don't want to like lose any of the volatiles uh, inside of the syringe. So if you run the syringe like 5 degrees or so, 10 degrees or so hotter, that's my trick to ensuring no carryover uh, when you're doing these headspace injections. So it keeps it really clean. And so I think, uh, you know, as we go here and I start explaining my equipment, maybe we can even get these companies to like, you know, install some new modules uh, pro bono, a little free install here for me maybe. And we could try out some of the different speamy fibers, uh, maybe some of the different extraction toolkits. Um, I know they got this cool thing called like the arrow, but we'll go and yeah, I mean, if we keep doing this, keep doing this, we can check out more uh, robotics behind the scenes, mass spec everything. And then for, for this, since we're doing headspace, we're going to be using these uh, 20 mil uh, glass vials and we're using these PFOS uh, free, that's important these days, PFOS free septa uh, and they got to be the magnetic septa 18 millimeter. Important to be the right size, of course, uh, 18 millimeter. And then I'm using a 2.5 mil uh, smart headspace syringe. Uh, I, I don't know what makes it smart, but I think it's the heating. Um, and so I'm just kind of doing standard headspace, doing 500 microliter injections, but you can do more, clearly. You can do 2.5 mils. All right, so to, if you got one of these PAL uh, robots, I'm going to go ahead and link you guys uh, the what, what I'm using for this ingenious sample handling product finder. It's actually pretty well organized to see all the different things that you can, like, you know, click, clack, and put on to, you know, like all the different modules, uh, all the different PAL modules, all the different fibers, all the different syringes, and everything you can do, everything you can do. So she's like, I'm going to send you that link. This is what I've been looking at. I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and show you what I've been looking at. Oof. So anyways, where were we? Oh yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and just look for the solvent, maybe a couple of the flavors, uh, in this Starbucks decaffeinated coffee. But first we need a good control. Home roast coffee. This is the best stuff. Sweet Maria beans, single origin, roasted recently. Fresh hand ground. Smells fantastic. Directly into the headspace tube. This is as good as it gets. I mean, this is my morning home brew. All right, we got it. Headspace data off the GCMS. We got the uh, air blank on top right in the middle. We got the Starbucks decaf, and then we got the home roast over here on the bottom. And then, you know, just to answer the question uh, at hand, there is no DCM. I'm not seeing it. So no DCM at detectable levels in the Starbucks. It's safe to drink. 
all right? Uh, but we are seeing some similar solvents and kind of interesting things uh, in the solvent fraction for both the home roast and the Starbucks. So I guess whatever they're doing to remove the caffeine is not really affecting uh, the volatiles that much. We basically got all the same things. And so the first thing I'm kind of surprised to find is there is acetone, a pretty small level, um, but you know, a noticeable peak uh, in the coffee. Uh, so that is a small ketone, the smallest ketone uh, in coffee. We also have isoprene, uh, acetic acid methyl ester, the two methyl propanol acetic acid, the butadione, and the butanone. And then we start getting into some of these furanes, which are the flavors. So let's talk about the flavors next. All right, so the flavors come out a little bit later. Um, the peaks are kind of blobby because a lot of things are like pyrolysis products that just don't resolve well uh, on the GC. So I think this is where like maybe the Spimi or those uh, or those Aero New Tech. Maybe we can get some New Tech and try to get coffee to look even better, uh, and we can dig even deeper. But as you can see, there are more flavors, basically all the same flavors uh, from the Starbucks decaf. Uh, also in my home roast. So the differences, though, uh, are these furanones. Uh, we got a little bit more furfurol. These are all these pyrolysis products. But um, really, like really cool is we got osmine and sabine, um, which are like terpenes uh, in my home roast. So let's go ahead and see what those taste like. Maybe we can figure out that like uh, why my home roast is so much more delicious uh, than this Starbucks coffee. All right, savony tastes like spruce, black pepper, nutmeg, giving woody, spicy aromas. Oh man, that's definitely contributing. And os means like this sweet, herbaceous, citrusy terpenes, like in mangoes and basil, and oh my gosh. I mean, this is definitely why my coffee's more delicious.